is on full speed ahead. Woo, we are so excited. We uh, want to just remind you that the word that God gave us on uh, New Year's Eve was all in. Are we all in? We're all in in every area of our life because we believe that God is all in. And we're going to get right in line with him. If he's all in, then I'm all in. And anything else is going to be okay. Everything is going to be all right. Well, tomorrow night, Thursday night, we have a special meeting at 7 p.m. I'm calling all dancers, actors, singers, and choir to be here because we are putting together our group for our Easter cantata. And oh my goodness, it is going to be amazing. We are taking all of our music, all of our dance, all of our acting from here, and we're going to go all the way up to here or higher because God has got a plan. He woke up Pastor Pabosco and said, I need you to go to Glad Tidings. I need you to bring this for them. And so this has never been produced anywhere else. It's produced specifically for us, and you get to be a part tomorrow night 7 p.m be here we need to know you and get you to sign up so that we can start auditions and all the things we're going to do also this sunday at 7 p.m through thursday to 7 p.m we are starting our all church prayer and fasting you know even the word says in matthew 17 but some things will not go away except by prayer and fasting. You know, there's some situations. I mean, I don't know. Does anybody have a situation that needs to go away, that God needs to take a hold of, and it's only going to happen by prayer and fasting? And we are going to come together corporately, and we're going to pray together. And those who can fast, Pastor will explain it on Sunday. Uh, we encourage you to fast with us. And let's just see what God does in your business, in your marriage, in your children, in your life. Let's just see what God does. So Sunday night, 7 p.m., we're going to start. The battle is on. <laughs> All right, worship team. Yeah, come on, hold your hands together. Come on, everyone, raise your hands.
Jesus, you're really here. Your tangible, undeniable presence is really here. We corporately acknowledge Jesus here. Lord, you're really here. We acknowledge you here. And I declare in the name of the Lord, nothing is impossible for God. There's no situation that's impossible once the master gets involved. And we invite your involvement. We invite your word. We invite you, Jesus. King Jesus. I want you to take a moment and every burden you have, just lift your hands with me and say, God, you're bigger than the burden. I give you every one of these burdens right now. I thank you. You resolve, you solve, you give wisdom, and you give direction. I thank you, King Jesus. I thank you. Hallelujah.
minister to those online right now. There is an undeniable, tangible presence of the Lord. The Lord is here right now. And all through history, God has chosen places. And this is the place he chose. The congregation is gathered tonight on Wednesday night. They're going to put their hands forward. We're going to pray for you, family, all over the world. From India, Pakistan, the Philippines, China. All over the world. You're tuned in right now. We know you're there. But most of all, God knows your address. And I declare that which has made you cry that which has made you give up, that which made you surrender, that the Lord, the Lord of the army of the Most High God would intervene on your behalf. And I declare angels to come on the behalf of the righteous and encompass you right now. I pray you'd breathe again, see again, dream again, and be alive again. Every area of your life that's dead, I declare in Jesus' name, come alive. Come alive by the power of the living God. Father, I thank you even in the sanctuary, the spirit of heaviness that comes on people. By their upbringing, their DNA, their disposition, their thought patterns, or their words. I pray right now there will be life in their heart, life in their mind, life in their mouth, and life in their circumstances. We declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone, hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to say the declaration for 2024. I want to say it out loud. All in. All in. Hallelujah. hallelujah. If you're married tonight, look at your wife and just say, all in. All in Come on, everybody. I'm all in. This is your church. Just say it. I'm all in, baby. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. On Sunday night, I've had numerous people, not one, and, and, not fantasy chasers. These are good people. Not one. But on Sunday night, there was a group of people that heard something like angels in the house. Angels in the house. They heard an octave that was higher in perfect harmony. And the Bible says we entertain angels unaware. Unaware. And I'm not gullible. I dental floss. Somebody yell at me. I deodorant every day. So I'm not caught up in nonsense. I'm telling you, angels are in the house. And historically, there has been what's called angelic choir, where the angels of heaven join in on the praises on earth. We just declare right now. How many will just say, angels, come on. Come on, everybody. Just say, come on in this place right now. Come in my life. God says he'll send his angel to an surround you hallelujah hallelujah now there's no real young people i'll say it to this trough well, look at some of you till you're 30 believed in santa claus look at someone say huh come on everybody what hallelujah. i believe in the power and the presence of god how about you god clearly instructs us our praise will bring his presence is the invitation for the presence of God. The whole purpose of building the temple was a place for the presence. The ark was the presence, and his house is the presence, and the worship is the presence. We got some people who sing real good, real good. We got some people that, that can play real good. But we want real good anointed people pure people. Hallelujah. We want excellence, but not for the sake of delighting the ears of man, but excellence for the delighting the presence of God. Hallelujah. Tell three people tonight, I'm in. Come on, tell them that right now. Say, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in. Well, what a privilege to be able to lead you in a confidence of the prosperity and the provision that God brings. It's, it's my honor to do that. Tonight we're going to give our tithes and our offerings. And ushers, would you please serve and make sure everybody has an envelope.
online, you can e-transfer, or you will send your tithe to 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver, British Columbia, or you can drop it off in the church mailbox. Genesis chapter 28 and verse 3. I want somebody in this place to say, bring it to me. Here we go. May God Almighty bless you. May He make you fruitful. And everything you have, multiply. Why don't you stand with me together? Say it with me. Bless me. Say, make me fruitful. And multiply what I have. Hallelujah. Let me just enjoy this for a moment. Multiplication, 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 multiplication. Hallelujah. I love my wife. We've been married 44 years, but I want to make an announcement. I never, ever want to watch a football game with her again. I came from Seattle, University of Washington Huskies, and she nearly ruined the game. She said, what are those stickers on those players' helmets for? I said, for hitting someone hard. Oh, you never give a sticker if you hit someone. Some men help me right now. Hallelujah. How many next year will invite her over? And then someone hit someone illegally. They threw a a flag and I'm enjoying the game because it was a flag on the team she's oh that was naughty that was naughty oh it got worse one of the coaches gave a guy a swat on the oh, she, oh that's inappropriate on television it, it was just a horrible game to be with her hallelujah hallelujah hold it up father in the name of Jesus bless your wonderful people Increase, multiply, let's give to the Lord. Well, we have a very special, a true father of the faith, a man of God. He's pastored one church for 48 years. He's from Portland, Oregon, New Song Community Church, um, Martin Luther King Boulevard, a phenomenal house. He's a gifted man, and the Lord has raised him up and brought him here, and he is going to put together a true anointed Easter program. He's going to be here with us tomorrow night. For all the singers, the dancers, the shouters, the actors. And he's bringing the word of God tonight. So I want everybody to just take a moment, stand with me all through the house, all right? And I, I, I want everybody just to have a little fun with me right now because he's in a great house. I, I just want to say, everybody just say, Probosco. Come on, somebody, say it. Probosco. Will you put your right foot forward? Probosco. Ba baby, this, this brother is going to bring a word, bring a hum, bring a shout, bring a jump. And he's going to bring the word of God. What an honor to have you. I love you. I respect you. Thank you for being in the house. Someone say, Probos. Praise God. Well, God bless you all. So good to be with you. Take a seat for a moment. Just want to get a little introduction here. For those of you who, who have probably heard that announcement for the first time, maybe not. I really feel that God has me on a, a divine assignment, and I'm very honored to be able to do that, is to work with the people of this house with, with Pastor and his wife, and also for all the, the singers in the house, the dancers in the house, and to produce, a, pro, produce something that I believe will be a blessing to not only this congregation, but to the city of, of Vancouver. And so that's part of my assignment of being here, and I, and I want you to start praying now what's going to happen then. And what a better time for you folks will be fasting and praying it's the fact of knowing that God has something for this city, but 
But what will break out in the city will be, ter- will be carried around the world. So that's what I believe God is going to do. And so thank you so much for graciously allowing me to, to share with you tonight. I, I sent a, a copy of my, see, my title for the message tonight. And some of you are saying, what in the world is this guy going to be preached about? Because it's, I, my, my title tonight is, you won't know what you've got until you're grown up. He said, oh my. I know we're going to deal, deal with, you know, toddlers or whatever. But today, we're going to go into the book of Hebrews, and I believe there are some things that you're going to discover about yourself, about what God is doing in your life, and what he's going to help you to, not only that you're becoming, but also the, the, the process. We go through things that we don't really understand until later on, and we realize, oh, so that's why that happened. Oh, that's why he didn't stay. Sometimes... He didn't, shouldn't have been there in the first place, but that's another story. That, that's, that's another teaching, so we'll, we'll leave that one alone. So I'm going to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 23 through 29. We're going to read those. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months in his parent, by his parents because they saw that he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid, oh, excuse me, they were not afraid uh, of the king's command. By faith, Moses... When he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Assuming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures uh, in Egypt, for he looked to, uh, to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him as who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the, the sprinkling of blood, lest he, uh, <clears throat> he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, for as the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. Let's pray. Lord, in these next few moments I want to take a time with these dear brothers and sisters and talk to them about something that we go through various stages of life, but we won't know what it's all about until we're really grown. It doesn't matter our age limit at this particular point. We have people of a variety of ages today, but there's some things that we, we need to talk about. There's a maturity that you're desiring from us if we'll only take the time to listen, to believe, and not to look at circumstances to dictate to us what our, for, what our final conclusion will be. Holy Spirit, guide and direct this time. And we'll give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. I, like, I write out my introductions sometimes and say, we're not having a college class. Well, for, for now, I just want to say a few things to you, that, lest I forget them. It says, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm confident that we would uh, have little debate or disagreement concerning whether the most prominent person in the, uh, in the Bible, actually in the Old Testament, was Moses. His historic account of his journey to become the leader of God's people in the, in, in the promised land from a, a baby that was in a basket in a river. As we begin a, a new year, and this really goes into what we're going to be experiencing when you folks will be fasting and praying in this year, I believe that the Lord would like to challenge us to look at <clears throat> at our present portion uh, uh, with the eyes of faith that will give hope beyond the basket that is presently we're experiencing. I don't know whether you feel like this. Well, I'm just kind of like a basket floating along the river. I don't know what's going to happen. So there's three things I want us to look at. Number one. Discover your destiny in Christ by trusting the Holy Spirit to maximize your potential. I don't think anybody heard me. I said discover your potential that's going to be maximized by the Holy Spirit. Some of us get so complacent, we come to, come to church every week, kind of, we, have, we already have a preconceived anticipation of what it's going to be like. Oh, they're going to sing a few worship songs, and, and, and uh, our good pastor is going to say something funny, and he's going to get us all excited, this type of thing. We've already got it mapped out, and we don't know what God's going to do. But you know what? God is tired of you trying to tell him ahead of time what he's going to do. God's going to do a new thing. Come on now. 
And so if, not, if that's going to happen, we have to change, change the way that we're thinking. And it's time to grow up. To grow up to be all that God has intended for you to be. Second thing is this. Be willing to wait on God to reveal your assignment in this time. Every single person in here, the, Lord, the assignment the Lord gave me was, was to come and work with you folks for, for a season. But everyone here has an assignment. And you say, I just kind of wonder what I'm supposed to do. It's more than just showing up at church, I want to tell you that. There's, when you came through those doors, God has something for you to do before you go out those doors. And oftentimes we miss it because we go through the, the, what's called a habit and a routine. It's quiet in this house. Blessed quietness, holy quietness. Hmm. That's all right. I'll be done in about 45 minutes. And if you, if you like this, I may go an hour and a half. So you better perk up now, y'all. Number three, resist the temptation to quit before you get started. There was a rap song. Can I, can I say a rap song? I'm too legit to quit. You remember that one? <laughs> He's trying to pretend like he don't know, but he, he does know. Too legit to quit. In other words, God has given me something that's inside of me that if I quit too early, I've missed all that, that God's invested within me. There's a, there, they had a little bit of review on this in, in the news media about, the, about people that, who nowadays, they're in a particular place where they're, you know, they're kind of quitting job. In other words, they're just, just basically, they go to their job, but they've already quit. They already have. But they don't want to get another job, so they just kind of do enough just to be able to stay on the payroll. Well, let's get it, jump, jump into this. You must let go of your past to embrace your future. Here, read a couple of verses, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. They're going to put those up there for us. Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Did they give you the, 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 what I was going to put up there? Uh-oh. Ooh, here we go. Uh, there we go. And a man of the house of Levi went <clears throat> and took as his wife a daughter of Levi. No, oh, that's Exodus. I'm sorry. Oh, dear. It Th doesn't matter. Uh, I can jump into this real quickly. What it talks about is the very idea that Moses, when he started out, he was in the household of of Pharaoh. And he realized, what? This isn't working for me. To stay here the rest of my life, there's something about it. It just didn't, doesn't go with the DNA that I believe this in my spirit. And so he decided, he says, well, you know what? Well, now they gave me one that works. And so I probably will be here a little bit longer. Okay. So Moses was born under circumstances that should have prevented him uh, uh, from being able to survive. I don't know about you, but I was, uh, I'm, one, I'm the, third, the third child of my mom and dad. And one thing that my dad said over me, I'll never forget. And I'm saying, not saying this to you for sympathy, but one day I was going down the stairs. He's coming up the stairs. He, he looked at me and, he, and this is what he told me. You aren't worth a nickel's worth of dog meat. I didn't know how to process that, but you know what? In my mind's eye now, I can still go back to those stairs, see him coming up, me going down, and him saying that very word against me. And some of you have the same type of indictments that were said to you a long time ago. But I want to tell you and the devil, the devil was, uh, devil, you were wrong. God had more in me than a nickel's worth of dog meat. But see, some of us are living in the past of, of things that, that, that were situated in our life that we just we somehow have taken on that particular idea. Well, uh, he was in bondage to slavery in Egypt. This is Moses. And he also, the king had, had given an instruction to midwives to kill the male children. But God placed fear in the hearts of the midwives. Moses survived in spite of what, they had, what, what uh, the man's plan was. You are here. You survived because God overruled the devil's plan for your life. You ought to be shouting right now. Well, it goes like this. Moses' beginning was subject to God's 
providence. Moses was hidden in a basket in the river. And he arranged for Moses to be found among the reeds by Pharaoh's daughter. How does that work? God has such an intimate plan. Some of you don't even know how you got to glad tidings. You thought it was your idea. God had it planned a long time ago. But he didn't bring you here to sit around. He's got something for you to, he's got an assignment for you while you're here. I don't know, this may not be a shouting message, but I'll shout for you. Yeah! Amen. I'll be my own shout. But it goes like this. And so Moses' sister arranged for his mother to be the person that took care of him. It's so many intimate circumstances that God did, went through to get Moses to where he was going. I want you to begin to praise God right now that what you thought was the worst thing to happen in your life, it would probably be the best thing because God, it was part of God's plan to get you where you are today. Well, when God is doing something big in, the, in your life, he will often hide you until the right time. Can I say something to you? Don't get frustrated. Don't get wounded by circumstances. Praise him every day. Every day is one day closer to what God had in mind in the very, very beginning. Well, Moses' parents saw potential when he was young. And when he was doing something big, in, when God's doing something big in your life, he will adjust the way we think uh, with, a mature, with a mature perspective. And the issue at hand is we must resist the temptation to quit before the Lord gets started. I believe it's more than just young people, it's older people that are here today that have regrets of things that they should have completed. But I want to tell you, God gave me a word before I came up here. It's not too late. As long as you got breath, it's not too late. God wants to bring you forward. Well, we must be careful not to make decisions based on our past. Some of you are making them old, crusty decisions based on what you thought or on what you're feeling. Feel, you know something? Your feelings will lie to you. And sometimes a mirror will tell you some stories. Because you like, oh, don't I look lovely? No, honey, no, you don't. You need to fix it up a little bit. Put a little paint on the barn. You must be better off. Time has not done you well, okay? It's all right. Get, get a little help. Don't be scaring us to death. Come on. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to preach, right? Here we go. We must resist the plans of the devil that will discourage us to quit before God really gets started. And the interesting thing about it is with all the things that, that we're going to be talking about, when God is doing something big, he will intentionally hide it until the right time. We can't force God's hand, but I want to encourage you. There is a timing for God. And when he, gets, he brings you to that particular place, it's going to be the greatest thing you've ever experienced in your life. Hebrews 11.24, we're going to go back to that verse there. It says, it says this, By faith Moses... When he became, came of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He grew up and says, hold on a second. I can't stay here. There's something greater God has got in my life. I want you to turn somebody, look him in the eye and tell him this. It might be time for you to move on. <laughs> so, 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 oh, I can't do that because I might not. Honey, it's time to get moving. Because th this is the, this, the, you've never met a day like this before, but I tell you what, we don't get returns on days. Once it's spent, it's over. So let's go on. Well, <clears throat> uh, here's one of the things. Don't take your uh, cues for your life from the culture. Verse 25 says this. <clears throat> he says, Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Woo! 
I know that the, the church has been ripped off of a lot of, of, I would say, amazing people that had gifts and talents for music and for acting and such like this. But you know something? I'm not pondering over that particular idea. If nothing else, God sent me here to rescue some folks from the temptation of getting involved with that particular thing because when there's an assignment from God on your life, I'm going to get behind you for you to fulfill everything God has planned for you. And that's what we ought to do for one another. God wants us to do that. So anyway, God discovered, <clears throat> excuse me, Moses discovered that he did not want to be a product of the culture and the passing pleasures of sin did not find a place in his heart. Can I ask you, what's in your heart right now? What really makes you happy? What gives you joy? Well, we'll discover in a few moments that Moses chose to be, a, to be, be mature enough to separate himself from where he was raised to where he belonged. You know, a sacrifice went with that. He's in the house of Pharaoh. He would never have to want for anything for the rest of his life. But one day when he saw one of his, his people being abused and he made a mistake and he killed that particular person that was abused, one, one of his people, that was a sign in him that says, you know what? I, I don't belong here. And I got to protect the, the heritage that's within me. And of course, there were some consequences to that. But the idea is this. He, <clears throat> he was in bondage to the slavery of the Egyptians and the, uh, the king had given instruction for, uh, for midwives to kill people like him. But Moses' beginning was subject to God's providence. And it go goes like this. Moses was hidden in a basket. He, he was hidden for a long period of time, but now God is really going to see what his life's all about. We're going to move real quickly because there's, I want to get to a destination here shortly. Even though he lived in the palace, those were not his people. So he chose to be mistreated. What? He chose to be mistreated. I know in our culture nowadays that Christian seems like they're suffering all types of things from different, different places around the world. But you know something? I do not feel like I'm a victim of circumstances. I have chosen to rise above all the things the enemy is trying to do to cause discouragement. He discovered the truth of what it meant to become mature and grow up and become what he was intended to be. So I, <clears throat> he chose the right path based upon what he saw in the promises of God. Can I ask you, what promise are you holding on to today? Uh, uh, that Jesus always will love me. He'll always take care of me. He, you know, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. That's what I believe. You are so, you are so short-sighted. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I want to let you know the DNA inside of you is greater than anything the devil will be able to pull off. And that's the thing that I want to ex exercise in you, that, that you've got to grow up into who God has intended you to be. Well, well, here's, here's this one quote that, well, you have to pay me money to use this one. Well, maybe not. Listen to this. Immaturity does not get better with age. Go ahead, write it down. Call up your best friend and say, I got something for you. Say, dude, immature, especially because everybody knows somebody that's immature and they have not grown up one bit. The only thing he did is the odometer for their age has, has been spinning. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Moses discovered that every, that every need that was being met by Pharaoh, God had something that was so much better. When you start measuring your life based upon what the world can give you, and you're not aware of what God has already given you, you got a problem. God is not in competition with the world. He will surpass everything the world has said or offered if you put your life completely entrusted unto him. So, he discovered that <clears throat> uh, when we grow, uh, grow and mature, we will discover the depth of things that really matter. And that means that things are going, <clears throat> that we are going through now may not make sense 
until later in life. Can I go back to that little story, that little thing about my dad saying, not worth a nickel's worth of dog meat? Even though I've never forgotten that, God has taken me to places I never dreamed I'd be able to go. To countries I've never dreamed of. The Lord allowed me to go to Germany nine times to, to do concerts on, uh, on the square in the middle of, uh, of Duisburg and various other different places. I've never dreamed of that. Let me tell you this one story. Can I tell you this one simple story? There was a, we, went, we're, we were doing a concert in, in Germany, and there was a young fellow that came to the concert, and his, his desire was to kill me. He had smuggled a gun in there, and we're up there on the stage singing, and all of a sudden, we're up there on stage, and we hear this, hear this noise there. It wasn't a gunshot, but also we hear this guy crying, and he hits the ground. He had a gun in his hand. He was going to take me out. The Holy Spirit hit him. He fell to the ground, dropped his gun, and got saved. This is true. His name was Adnan. God, if you give your life over to God, the devil cannot take what God has anointed in your life. Well, anyway, when we grow up and mature, we will discover the depth of the things that God has for us. Things are going, we're going through now will make sense later, but don't quit just because things don't make sense. Well, here's another little issue here. Every need that sin is meeting in your life now, God can do better. What? I say that for a reason. Because some people get caught in the web of sin, especially in the drug culture. And they feel that nothing could surpass the high they're getting off of various types of drugs. I've never been a drug user, so I can't even call the various names of them, other than what they have on television. But I want to let you know, if, uh, if I don't, it doesn't seem like there's anyone here that's is in that particular trap. But if there were someone here that was in that particular place, I would tell them this. <laughs> It's not even close to what God has to offer you. Exceeding greatly above and beyond what you could, you could ask or even imagine. I want to get to the last bit of this message tonight because there's, I think there's a prayer that we will need to pray, pray before we leave here. Moses needed to grasp a tighter grip on faith. And so the idea of getting a tighter grip on faith was him to realize that it doesn't matter what the devil's trying to do. God is going to take you through it. So Moses allowed the rebellious ways of the people to get in his heart. Now, this is what will blow you up. Moses was doing good. But if you allow people's rebellion and the way they do things to get in your heart, it will ruin you. Oh, yes, it will. Remember, he wants to lead them into the promised land. But these people were hard-headed. And all kinds of things were going on. And finally, one time, uh, there was a situation that God gave him an assignment to do something very simply. They needed water. And he says, you know, you know, uh, speak to the rock and they'll get water and this other type of thing. And he's, all right, these rebellious, knuckle-headed people speak to the rock. And say, Here's you. We need some water. Let me get her. He starts beating on rocks and this other type of thing. The, the water came out. But David, uh, excuse me, but he didn't go in the promised land. Do not let the provocation of people's hard-headedness keep you from receiving the prize that God has for you. Can you imagine leading around a bunch of hard-headed people all this time and then finally not be able to get in? Yeah, I tell you. Well, things like that do happen. You allow the people that he was leading to affect his uh, response to faith in God. The water giving rock, I believe, was a symbol of Christ, that uh, Christ <clears throat> was to come years later. That was symbolic. But it goes on to say this. When he struck the rock, it was as if he had struck Christ. I want to reel in, in your heart right now regrets you have for things you've done. I want to heal you from the fact of 
feeling like, well, it's too late now. There's no way to repair that particular decision that I've made. I believe that God can rescue you from a life that you feel like, well, I guess my best days are over. Here's what, here's what I would say. He said, <clears throat> excuse me, God was faithful and brought forth the water even though Moses' anger was demonstrated. Don't miss out on God's best for you by allowing the enemy to get into your heart to ruin God's plan for you. I believe there's some people sitting here tonight that have regrets over choices they've made, over things they've said. And before you're, you leave this room today, you need to repent and let go. I'm going to say it again to these people over here. Y'all wouldn't listen to me. If you repent and let go of things that, that you know that, that you shouldn't have done, God will renew your heart and refresh and do what he was intending to do in the first place. But you've got to acknowledge it. We try to, we try to pat it in our sin and things that we're hiding behind and we just don't want to admit it. Can I tell you something? You are dead wrong. Your attitude is bad. God wants to heal you, but you need to let go. Well, God was faithful and brought forth water, but Moses' anger put him in a place where he couldn't enjoy all the benefits of what God had. Here's what I would say, because there's a conclusion of some, some thoughts that I think that we'll do. In the end, God showed mercy and compassion on Moses, and this is how he did it. He let him see the promised land. Well, I guess it's better, not, better than nothing. Oh, you want to settle for better than nothing? I want to rescue you from that. I want to get everything out of the way so you can get into the promised land. I don't want to look. I want to live in the promised land. Well, he gave the people the water that they needed. He personally buried Moses in honor for all that he had gone through. Here are the, here are the thoughts I want to leave with you, and then we're going to pray. Remember where God found you. What does that mean? I think there's probably a number of things or places where God had found each one of us. Some of you were found very young. I know I, I was privileged to find Jesus, or Jesus found me, excuse me. He wasn't lost, I was. But I was nine years old. But I can tell you, I can relive that scene I remember I was, in the, I was in the downstairs part of the church sitting on the back row and they made an altar call and I literally just burst into tears. I was nine years old and I ran up to the altar and fell on my face and I just cried because I knew I needed Jesus. Folks, we got to come back to the place where we can remember where God brought you from. Don't try to take that out of your memory because that was the beginning point of all the good things that God has done in my life. That's one thing we need to do. Remember where God found you. Second thing, believe where God is taking you. He didn't find you just to sit there and do nothing. You're on a journey, and that journey is to discover all the great things that God has in your life to make you all he's intended you to be. I know there's a lot of discouragement that happens. I know there's a lot of things that people go through. But I want to tell you today that God wants to do something really miraculous as far as that's gone. That, that says, so believe in where God is taking you. And then, here's one that's, that's really good for you. Ask him now to rescue you from three things. Doubt, fear, and unbelief. Say it with me, doubt, fear, unbelief. Well, I, those aren't problems that I have. 
I got a word for you, liar. Oh, you've never doubted God before? Oh, well, there's a few times I was kind of, you know, thinking maybe, maybe not. That's doubt. If he said it, he's going to do it. But the devil, it comes into your mind and tries to uproot what God said and replace it with the thought, it'll never happen. So I believe that's that's something. But here are my last two statements. Because I I really want to take a moment to pray pray with you all. The two most important days in your life, do you know what they are? Some of you say, oh, when I found that beautiful girl, I married her. That was the most important day in my life. Well, could be. But you know, if you don't straighten up, she ain't, she ain't going to stay. <laughs> she ain't staying. No, no, no. Oh, no. There are other options available, so I just want to let you know. So if you think, think that that's your whole life, no, no. Well, the first one is this. The day you were born. That's number one. God chose to put, blood, to put blood in your veins, to put breath in your mouth, but he had something in mind for you to come into this world. And you know what's sad? Some of you don't even know what that is. You are 40-some, 50-some. I don't mind telling folks, I'm 77. Best-looking 77-year-old you will ever see in your life. <laughs> but I'll tell you this much. I don't want to leave here with just a seven, with a marker on there. He's glad here 70 years. 70, I don't know what he did or what he was here for. I'm so glad he's gone. That's not my goal. So the two things is the day you were born, the two most important days, but here's the, here's the best one. The day you find out why. Two most important days of your life. You can write them down, and I will not, you know, attack you for plagiary or using my thoughts. So, the day you're born, you say, well, there should be something spiritual to that. There is. The day you find out why. That's the spiritual component. God is, is not wasting air upon people just to float around here. I'm just, oh, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm a part of the world, a part of the process this time. And you ain't doing nothing. Are you serious? Come on. God didn't just put a breath and air and all this other stuff in you just so you could float around and be a, a, a spiritual gypsy. Are you kidding me? God has intent and purpose in everyone in this room. Can I go back through a quick review Moses was in a bush, in a basket, as a baby. But God made arrangement to get him out of there, to put him in the house of Pharaoh. But he had to discover on his own, I don't belong here. God's got something better for me than being in Pharaoh's household. That's what I want you all to discover. Everybody stand up with me. We're going to pray. And then I'm going to turn this back over to Pastor. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to answer that question for me. From the day you were born to this day, you believe you've discovered why God sent you here. I'm so thankful for the beautiful families I see, I've seen that come to this church. The wonderful loving relationships of husbands and wives. But I hate to disappoint you, that is not the only reason you were born. The anointing of God is in this place today to put upon you a response of what he has had intended for you from the very beginning. You are an intricate part of the, of the plan of God. And I want to pray over every person standing here tonight. I'm not going to call you down the altar. I'm going to pray over you. That your goal 
in your life will be fulfilled by the power of God. I want everybody to raise your hands right now. Everybody, everybody, everybody in this place. Father, I speak a blessing over everyone in this house. Those who have been through trials and tribulations, those who have been wafting with faith, doubt, fear, and unbelief, Lord, those are things that you can erase from our lives immediately if we will only admit to you how much we need you. I curse the works of the enemy. I curse the works of the devil that would tell anyone here that they're not worthy or they're not, they don't, are valuable enough for God to send Jesus enough to die for them. Lord, I pray from this moment forward as we go forth from this place that we go from here with joy, with peace, with love, with understanding, knowing that above everything that we've gone through, that you have done the greatest thing by allowing us to find Jesus as the Savior of our life. And Lord, right now we repent of doubt, fear, and unbelief that would keep us from reaching that place that we can find ourselves serving you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. I thank you for this. I praise you for this. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. God bless you. I love you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's thank Pastor Probosco. Can we do that? Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Probosco, bringing a timely word to the people of the Lord. I want you to say this again to somebody. Say, I'm all in. Hallelujah. I've decided to follow Jesus. I'm completely and totally in. I want to personally invite you. We had a lot of people on Tuesday night, a lot. And uh, I believe in the production we'll have over 50 people. We'll need dancers. I need some people to dance for me. Come on, somebody. Come on. I need some dancers right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Pastor, don't dance. Don't dance. Okay. Uh, singers. Actors. And we're going to put something together and give it to God as an offering, and the Lord's going to use us. All right, everybody? So tomorrow night, <clears throat> 7 o'clock, Pastor Bert Bosco will be laying it out. Planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish in the courts of our God.